Hi, if this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. Or if you're like me and you've been here before, welcome back. I'm Chaotic Curl. And in today's video, I'm actually going to be making some sleeves. I've been seeing them all over Pinterest. It's been showing up on Instagram and on YouTube. And I want to make myself some balloon sleeves. They look super cute and it looks like it's not that hard to make. So I do have some yarn. I'm going to show you guys in the next clip, in the materials clip. But the yarn that I'm using is actually a really pretty pink and gray. So I'm hoping it looks as fancy as I want it to look. But we'll see when it comes out. I'm really excited to get started working on this project. So let's go to the next clip. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and of course, don't forget to join me on my Instagram at chaoticcurl underscore crafts. But let's get started with this with these sleeves. These are the materials I'm gonna be using to make this crochet bolero. So I have my yarn, of course, it's gonna be the Premier Basics Marl. As you can see, it's a size four worsted weight yarn. And as the skein says, it has 245 yards or 224 meters. It's five ounces or 140 grams, and it is 100% acrylic. And let me just show you the other part of the label. It is also a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, which I just showed you that guys that I had. And it is actually machine wash and machine dry. So that's great. And just so you guys can see, this is going to be colorway 2001-04, which is the Rose Quartz Marl. And this is just a little bit of a closer look at the yarn. So you can see the different pinks that it has with a base color of gray. It's super cute. I actually really do love it. So I'm super excited to get started on this project. These are all the materials that I will be using. Of course, as you can see, I also do have my measuring tape. So I'm ready to get started. So let's get to work. So I figure in order to get started with this project, since I'm doing the cuffs with the slip stitch ribbing again, because I really did love it so much. So what I'm gonna do is actually measure how far up my arm I want the cuff to go. So this is my starting point. And of course, the beginning of the tape measure would be my end point. So I'm measuring at six inches, which is where I, I'm gonna want it to start, or I want the cuff to stop up my arm, at least six inches. So what I'm gonna do is make my chain now that i've got my yarn all caked and ready to go i'm gonna make my chain six inches and then we'll start doing the slip stitches so i'm gonna do that now okay here's my hook and i already made my slip stitch so i'm just gonna start with the chains As you see, I made it past those six inches here by one, two, three stitches. So I'm actually just gonna come back and undo two of them, but I'm gonna use my handy dandy safety pin as a stitch marker at six inches, which let me just make sure everything is straight, nothing is stretched. Okay, so I'm gonna mark off my six inches with the safety pin. And then I'll just come back and undo the stitches until I have just one left. So this is where the safety pin is and that's just one. So it's here where I can start slip stitching <laughs> and start my ribbing. So that's what's gonna happen now. Okay, so to do the slip stitches, if you don't remember or you don't know how, you, well, I'm working through the back loop of the chain before, just to let you guys know. I'm working through the back loop, so this is what the chain looks like in the front. And this is that little back loop that you get from pulling through the loop when you're chaining. 
So what I'm gonna do is just pull my, put my hook through that little loop, yarn over, and then you pull through everything. And that's how you slip the stitch. And again, you just go through the little loop, and then you pull through everything. Through the loop, yarn over and pull through everything. And that's how it's done. Thankfully, it's super easy. It works up pretty quickly and it looks really nice. This is the same stitch that I used to make the cuff in my sweater video. And that's actually what it's looking like so far. That's just the first row. Don't worry, it, it looks nicer as we keep going, but you'll see that. Okay, so I have my little worm. I finished the first row of slip stitches. I made sure to chain one at the end. So now I'm ready to start working in the back loop to work that slip stitch ribbing. And here's how. Make sure you have your yarn in a comfortable position like always. Then you're just going to go into, as you can see, I hope you can see. Okay, now as you can see, there's two little loops in the slip stitch from the previous row that I did that you can see here, one and two. So what we're gonna do is go into that back loop, number one loop, just gonna slip my, go into there, slip yarn over, and then like how we did the slip stitches, go through everything. So again, it's loops one and two. We're just gonna go under that first one in the back, Yarn over and go through. Can you just keep doing that? Down the line. And of course, when you get to the end of the row, you're gonna chain one and you're gonna turn and you're going to keep doing the same. You're gonna work into the back, into this first loop, because you have one and then two. The two is the closest facing you, one is the farthest away, that's the back. So you're gonna go under that first loop, yarn over, pull through, everything. And you just keep doing that until you reach the size that you want and just checking the length again. As you can see, we're still at six inches. So we're gonna keep growing from here. I made it out to six inches on the cuff. So now what I'm actually gonna do is do a row of single crochet on the top right here where you see that loop. Sorry for the trembling. And I'm just gonna make sure to add my increases here. So I'm actually going to do, well, I'm gonna check and see. I'm gonna do two and then I'm gonna see if maybe increasing by three will get me to where I wanna be. So I'm actually gonna try both and i'll come back and i'll show you guys the stitch that we're going to be using for this so as of right now this is what the cuff is looking like flat i'm really liking the color the transition of the pinks with the gray it's beautiful i love it okay i was able to do the increase by three 
for all of them except at the end where I just needed to add two more so that I could finish off in a multiple of four. So if I counted correctly, I should have 128 stitches here. And for the stitch that I'm going to be using to actually build up the sleeve, I'm going to be using the iris stitch. So it did need to be in a multiple of four. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I do have 128 stitches here so I can do that stitch with no problem. And I'm also hoping that these little ruffles here at the sleeve do stay and you know, with while the sleeve grows. So that way that balloon can have the cute little ruffle effect coming down into the ribbing but this is what we've got so far and now i'm going to get started on that iris stitch and i did make sure to include the tutorial where i learned how to do it below in the description box so if you want to learn how to do it too just follow that link the tutorial is pretty simple to follow and you'll be you'll be able to learn a lot that that's where i learned how to make this stitch so it makes sense to just send you guys there too Okay, so I do need to say some changes that I made. Um, as you guys know, I like to start my rows with the stacked single crochet as the turning chain. So as you've seen before, how I do it, there is no chain one here for that turning chain. You're not supposed to do one when you're doing this stitch. This is the turning chain. So I'm just gonna go back into that, my last stitch from that previous row. Oh, and as you can see, I did pull up the tail so that I could hide it underneath these current stitches that are coming. So let me just do that single crochet. And then we just come back into that second leg. So as you see, there's one, two legs. We're just gonna go into that second one, this one right here. I'm gonna go under, yarn over and pull through. And then again, yarn over and pull through. And we have two single crochets stacked one right on top of the other. Now for the primrose stitch, we're going to do another double crochet into that same stitch. Oh no. Yeah. A double crochet into that same stitch. So let's me. That's a double crochet. Chain one. And then we would come back here and do two more double crochet. So that's one. Two. And then we skip three, so that's one, two, three. And into this stitch, we would do two double crochets, chain one, and then two double crochets. So that's one double crochet, two. Chain one, one, Two. Okay, and that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of the row. So I'm gonna just skip three and then do another iris stitch and I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like on the second row because that's when you get to see the the stitch just a little bit better. But it is a one row repeat, as you'll see if you, if you go to the, the tutorial that I linked down in the description below. But I'll come back to show you guys what row two looks like. This is how row one turned out. It's it's gonna get better the more you know we build up. We'll be able to see the the stitch a lot better. But we're on row two, and for row two, what we're gonna do is that turning stacked single crochet, like I said. So no chain again. We just go through that first stitch, yarn over, pull through. Again, yarn over, pull through two like a regular single crochet. Then we come into this same stitch that we just made, that single crochet into that second leg of the single crochet, and we yarn over and pull through. Now we have two loops on our hook, then one more time, yarn over and pull through. Now we're just gonna keep going with the pattern, but in this case, we're gonna start in that chain one space, so we're gonna skip all the stitches that haven't been worked in and go right into that chain one space with a double crochet. We do another double crochet. Chain one, and two more double crochet in that same chain one space.
then we just go into our next stitch into that chain space and we do one double crochet two double crochet chain one one double crochet two double crochet Just to show you one more time, we go into that next chain one space right here. We're gonna yarn over, go through the chain one space, yarn over and pull your yarn through it. Then we do a double crochet, which is yarn over and pull through two loops. Then we yarn over again and pull through two loops, and that's a double crochet. So again, yarn over through that chain one space, yarn over, pull through two. Again, yarn over, pull through two, and then we chain one, and the two more double crochet. And that's actually the rest of the pattern. Okay, so I'm running into a dilemma. I think the sleeve is gonna be too big. I'm already here at this point and where I measured it halfway, it's 18 and a half inches. So I'm not sure if I should undo this or just keep going. I do like the way that it looks right now, but again, I'm not sure if I should be undoing it or if I should just keep going. And a part of me really, really wants to just, like I want to undo it. I really do wanna undo it. But another part of me is telling me to just keep going and see what it looks like when I'm almost done. So I think I'm going to do that one. And you know what? If I have to undo it after it's done because it is too big, well then I'll undo it. But as of right now, this is how far I am. So as you can see, there's my arm and it actually comes up almost to my elbow so I'm gonna keep growing it just a little bit more or till it's at least at my elbow or a little past my elbow just to see how big it's gonna be and you know I'm also gonna try as much as possible to save all the work that I've done I'll see if I can reduce the stitches maybe that'll help and if nothing helps worse comes to worst I'll undo the sleeve and I'll just redo it so right now I'm just gonna keep going with the sleeve the way that it is and I'll check in again when I'm halfway to let you guys know what it is I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna undo it or if I'm just gonna keep going. I'll see you guys then. As I'm sure you can tell, I'm gonna undo it. I'm gonna undo it, it's way too big and I've used so much yarn in just this little bit that I've done and I've spent a whole day just doing this and I love it and it's beautiful but it's way too big. So I'm gonna have to undo it. As you can see, I already 
attached it to my yarn wall winder and I'm ready to go. I'm gonna undo it. It doesn't make sense to wait until I'm halfway. So I'm just gonna undo it and, and I'll redo it. <laughs> So I'm back to where I started. I'm gonna be a little less ambitious this time because three stitches was just a little bit too much for the increases. So I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna do two stitches, as you can see in each space, now that they're all wide open. <laughs> I'm gonna do two stitches in each space at the top of the slip stitch ribbing, and then I'll do my Irish stitch. So I'm gonna get working on that. Let's hope it's not too big this time. And just in case anyone was wondering, on my fingers I have washi tape. It's just a cute little roll that I have nearby for when I'm winding yarn or rewinding yarn so that I don't get burned on my fingers and I can still hold the tension of the yarn so that it's not super loose on the ball so that it's like a big dense cake. I love it, but I use tape. To not get the yarn burn so that's what that was but I'm gonna get started <laughs> Thank you. 
So this is how take two is going so far as you saw. Let me just flip it over. I did add on the second cake of yarn from this skein onto our project and it is actually halfway up the arm now. So this is what it's looking like. We got a lot farther this time around than we did the other time. But like I said, I had switched it to doing only two stitches in each opening at the base here so I increased it that way and the ruffles are still super cute so the sleeve is building up to be as big as I want it to be I'm super happy with the way it's looking and I'm just gonna keep going until I build it out to well until the size that I need it of course so we'll keep doing that here's our fit check this is what it's looking like so far I just added the second skein of yarn onto my project, so now we're on two skeins. Okay, so now that this length is officially the length of my arm, I made sure to block off the middle iris stitch. I'm not going to be crocheting in these stitches anymore. So what I'm going to do is actually just crochet on this side and then of course on the other side so that I can have a front and back panel and then be able to get started on the other sleeve. Okay, so I'm going to get started on one of the panels. I don't know which side this is going to be yet, but as you can see, I have my hook ready to go and I've marked off again the center stitch. So what I'm going to do is continue the same pattern of the iris stitch all the way until I get to here and then I'll just do the double crochet turn and continue the curry. Here's what it's looking like with one side of the sleeve panel done. And to start the other side, I just reattach the yarn like normal do my stack single crochet and continue with the iris stitch.
So here we are. I've got my two sleeves done and at this point, I have to be honest, I'm making a shrug. I'm not just making sleeves, but I'm loving the way it's turning out. So what I'm going to do now is just seam up the sleeves and add the finishing touches. I think I'm going to add a bit of um, ribbing just here at the bottom and a couple of buttons just to dress it up a little bit, but I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like once it's done. I'm just checking in before I continue to add the finishing touches just to let you guys know I'm going to actually reattach the yarn and do two more rows of the Irish stitch just so that this one, this back panel can overlap and I'm going to do the same thing to the front ones but on the opposite side so I'm going to extend this back, this front panel so that way it overlaps over this one and of course the one that it doesn't overlap is the one that's going to get the buttons and I'll just finish sewing up this, the seam of the sleeve and I'm going to add a little ribbing well, yeah, I'm going to add a little ribbing on the bottom and then it'll be ready to go if you don't already know how to add slip stitch ribbing to a project, you can check out the video that I linked in the description below, which is where I learned how to add the slip stitch ribbing. And just for a tip, I did make sure to do single crochets along the raw edge, just so that it would be a little bit more cleaned up for the slip stitch ribbing, but that's this is what it's looking like. Now I'm going to add some buttons to the front and the back. Here's the finished product. The colorway has my dreams. And look, I added buttons. This is the front. And this is the back. And the way you can tell the back is the back is because it's seamed. So this is completely closed while, of course, in the front it's open. And I put a button here just, you know, to close it just a little bit better. But this is what the shrug looks like. So as promised, I'm back to show you guys the finished product. This was supposed to be sleeves, but from the looks of it, it's turned into a shrug. So I made a crochet shrug with balloon sleeves and I added some button detailing as well as ribbing, um, slip stitch ribbing on the bottom. So this is what it's looking like. Well, this is what it looks like. It's done. This is honestly the easiest project I've ever made. It, I just made sleeves. I made sleeves and I stuck them together. It's super cute. And I do have to say, I had a great time making the Irish stitch, the iris stitch, but this yarn, the colorway is insane. This is fancier than what I was expecting it to look. It looks super high class. I totally love it and thanks so much you guys for joining me in today's video if you made one yourself please don't forget to show me over on my instagram at chaotic curl underscore crafts please don't forget to also like this video and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in my next video bye